Hey, it's Matt Karamazov. Welcome back to the channel. So today with me, I've got the 17 books that I'm going to be finishing in the month of February. Uh, so I've got a few books to finish between now and then. I've got a few days to sort of wrap up my reading. And then starting from February 1st to however however many days February has this year, um, I'm going to be finishing these these other 17 books, including these three mystery books, which you'll find out what they are. Uh, they're not like mystery novels. They're just mysteries to you because you don't know what they are yet. So you're going to find out what these three books are, as well as the other 14 books that I've got uh, coming up this month. Wait, 14 plus three? Yeah, the other 14 books that I've got coming up this month. And uh, as well, if you stay to the end of the video, I'm giving away a free book. Basically, I'm buying one of my YouTube subscribers a book of their choice. Um, under a certain dollar amount, of course, but if you stay to the end of the video, you'll find out how you can enter to win a book from me. You know, my whole my whole deal here is to inspire people to read more of the best books. And if I have to, you know, buy you a goddamn book in order to make that happen, I will. So stay to the end and you could win a free book. Uh, so with that, let's uh, get into what these books actually are. Let's uh, get going. So I'm gonna shatter some of the suspense right here in the beginning and tell you a little bit about uh, one of the, the first three mystery books. Uh, it's Hamlet by William Shakespeare. So I told you it's like the foundational book or one of the foundational books of Western literature. And that's true, uh, but my favorite book of all time, Infinite Jest, which is actually, my copy is like right over there, um, is uh, is based on Hamlet. So it, like the character structure of like the main characters uh, is based on the family structure in Hamlet. Uh, even like some of the plot is the same. It's like the title, well, Infinite Jest is the is the name of the book, and that is like a quote from Hamlet. So, and I've never read Hamlet, so I'm gonna finally read it next month. Uh, let's see. Next up is uh, one of my favorite philosophers of all time. Basically, reading his books was like a before and after um, in my life. Uh, my favorite book of all time, or one of my favorites, is called The Book by Alan Watts. And uh, this one is called The Two Hands of God by Alan Watts. Um, it's basically about polarity, so lightness and darkness, uh, you know, uh, sadness and joy, um, you know, earth and sky, basically how we need one thing in order to have the other, like the whole yin-yang thing, um, which is true. I mean, you can't have life without death, um, that type of thing. So looking forward to that. Um, Third, we've got a biography of Eleanor Roosevelt. Uh, she's one of my favorite people pretty much of all time. And uh, this is a different biography than the one that the Pulitzer Prize winning one uh, that I told you about in the uh, in the intro. Uh, but I'm also a huge fan of her as well. Like just some of the, like the limited things that I know about her are just really impressive and, and really, uh, really captivating. So I really can't wait to read, you know, more about her. I mean, she, well into her 70s, you know, even after, you know, even after being first lady in of the uh, United States, she basically, uh, she said no to a bunch of like the, the Secret Service protection. She drove herself around everywhere, carried a gun, <laughs> and she probably knew how to use it too. But not just that, she was so involved in just making other people's lives better and in whatever way she could and just always learning new things and helping other people learn new things, which is what I'm about as well. So looking forward to this one. One other very important thing that I'm gonna mention before I get too far ahead of myself is that for every new subscriber to the channel, I'm gonna be donating $1 to a charity called First Book. And what they do is they supply books to underprivileged children who are desperate to read them. So in some places, you know, you've got you know one new book a year for three children, uh, which is just so completely not enough. And like, you'd think that I was making this number up, uh, but apparently there are some places in, in what what are called book deserts where there's just an absence of books to read. Um, there's like one book or, or what have you for as many as 800 children, like one new book a year for like 800 kids. Like that's unconscionable. Um, so for every new subscriber, uh, I'm gonna be donating $1 to them. And of course you can donate uh, some yourself, uh, but just know that that's something that I'm gonna be doing and you can find a link to, to my fundraising campaign down in the description. Um, so with that said, let's keep going. And next up after that one, we've got A History of Reading by Alberto Manguel. 
And I, I've, I've read quotes from this book, but I haven't even started this one. And uh, interestingly enough, so I was looking for this one at an independent bookstore and I searched the entire place, not the whole place, it's massive. Uh, but I, I mean, I spent a good hour and a half, two hours just like searching for books, including this one, and I couldn't find it anywhere. And then I got to the checkout and I just, I was waiting for the guy to ring up the 25, 30 books that I bought, not an exaggeration. <laughs> and I'm just sort of like looking around and I see a pile of books in like a, a section called books about books. And the very first one that I saw was this one. So it was like a random, just a random sighting, if you will. I instantly just, you know, man, in the cart, in the cart. And uh, so I will finally get around to reading it uh, in February. Okay, uh, next up, one of the other books for me that was like a big before and after uh, was The Outsider by Colin Wilson. Um, so it's a philosophy book. It came out in 1956, and uh, it, it's he was like an existentialist, basically. His movement, if you will, is called New Existentialism. So uh, he was concerned with uh, outsiders, obviously. Uh, people who, who, who can sort of step outside their place in time and, uh, and history and sort of and sort of observe themselves and observe society at large. And you know, I don't want to, <laughs> he, I don't think he's, he's a pessimist per se, but a lot of the outsiders are, are dissat they're outsiders because of a, a dissatisfaction with the, the bland um, sameness, the, the, the bland quality of daily life that's experienced by most people. And they want to achieve a sort of intensity that's, that's um, you know, much, much more fiery uh, than that. They want to actually be alive instead of just breathing. And so that, that's what his whole outsider cycle, uh, this series of seven books was about. It's basically about going from death in life to life in life. Um, so The Outsider was the first book, then it was uh, Religion and the Rebel, uh, which I've also read, and then The Age of Defeat, uh, which is like the decline of like genuine heroism in the world, which I see. And uh, the fourth book is called The Strength to Dream uh, by Colin Wilson. So I, I picked this up on Amazon. It's one of the only uh, copies extant uh, now. So I'm going to read that next month finally. Um, Next up after that, a really quick one, um, like 17 books you might think, you know, how is he like gonna find the time for that one? This one is called How to Grow Old by uh, Marcus Toler, <laughs> wow, Marcus Tullius Cicero. Um, and it's, it, it's like a, it, it's this basically. So, I mean, I can read this in a day. Like I just read The Archer by Paolo Coelho and you know, it's 133 pages. Not all of the pages even have words on. So, I mean, I read it in like I don't know, an hour, hour and a half. Uh, this one will be, be similar. So ancient classical Roman, uh, an excellent orator, like a great speaker. And I know almost nothing about him. So like, I know lots about the Seneca and Marcus Aurelius and all those guys. Um, and they come up in one of the other books that I'm reading this month, but I know next to nothing about Cicero. So it's basically a collection of, of, of his writings on getting older. Um, so I'll read this in a couple hours and then, you know, make up some lost time on some of the, the thicker ones. So moving right along to the next book, we've got The Good Neighbor, a biography of Fred Rogers. That's Mr. Rogers to you. Uh, I know next to nothing about this man, except he was like a hero to children everywhere. Um, I just, I'm such a big fan of this guy. And despite having never, um, uh, never watched, I don't think, uh, Welcome to the Neighborhood. I think it was like his television, like his kids show was off the air, I think, uh, when I was growing up. I'm pretty sure, maybe I just missed it. Uh, but he, like, this guy, man, he would wake up every single morning and get in front of the TV cameras and make sure that, like, the kids everywhere, his kids, you know, millions of them, had the best possible start to their day, to their lives, um, as he could possibly give them. And I just, man, uh, I just want to know more about him. And uh, so I finally have my chance here with this biography. Speaking of biographies, we got uh, the next one, one of the three mystery books that I alluded to earlier in the video. It's a Pulitzer Prize winning biography of Frederick Douglass. So it's uh, Frederick Douglass, Prophet of Freedom. Uh, forget the author, the author's uh, David W. Blight. Uh, so won the Pulitzer Prize, and I know next to nothing about Frederick Douglass, even though I know he was a massive influence on uh, American politics, a, a positive influence on American politics, which, man, that's rare these days. And uh, he's got one of my favorite quotes ever about reading. 
And I think it means even more coming from him because he was an escaped slave um, in the 19th century, uh, right after the Civil War in the United States. And what he said, and like this is way more powerful coming from someone like him, uh, what he said is that once you learn how to read, you will be forever free. And like this, this man, he taught himself how to, like no one was gonna teach an escaped slave how to read. Like nobody was interested in that at all. Like if they, if they were, they didn't know how to read themselves. So he taught himself and like he, he taught himself so well that now the things that he's written are in like university courses. Uh, so I'm really excited for this biography. Okay, not sure which book we're on right now, but uh, the next one, <laughs> it's uh, called The Complete Book of Shaolin. Uh, so you may have heard of the Shaolin monks. They're known for like these crazy feats of like physical strength and endurance and just, just, just crazy shit. Uh, look up some of their stuff on YouTube. Uh, when I, I, I don't remember the exact detail, like what exactly they were doing, but there was one one monk was like hanging by his feet from like a pole, like basically doing pull-ups, holding like a little tiny cup of water. And he would like, like dip this tiny cup of water uh, in like a, like a, like a bowl of water um, next to his head on the ground. And then he'd do like a sit up up to the pole and then put the, the like he would transfer the entire like pot of water up to crazy shit. And just like then, breaking bamboo sticks on their abs and shit like that. Just ridiculous stuff. Uh, but this one's called The Complete Book of Shaolin, and uh, the subtitle is A Comprehensive Program for Physical, Emotional, Mental, and Spiritual Development. So, hey, I mean, sign me up for all four of those. Um, looking forward to it. Um, all right, next one is uh, by Haruki Murakami, one of the other... Uh, uh, favorite uh, writers of mine, and he's got a, a quote that I think about quite often. Um, he he says that uh, if you only if you only read what everyone else is reading, you can only think what everyone else is thinking. And uh, like he has one of his characters say that in one of his books, and you know it's one that I, it's a quote that I return to quite often because I, I think it's so absolutely true. Um, like I read popular books as well, um, but I, I make a point to sort of to branch out and read things that you know. I don't see too many people reading, like uh, Colin Wilson, Alan Watts, and I mean, they're astoundingly popular, but I mean, you know, not as many people have heard of them as opposed to, uh, say, Rumi, which is the, the next book. Um, so what I talk about when I talk about running uh, by Haruki Murakami, and uh, it's, it's a sort of running, writing memoir. Uh, it, it's about him training for the New York Marathon, and basically his thoughts about the running life and the writing life and how they intersect. And then since I've, I'm holding this book anyway, um, it's The Essential Rumi, translated by Coleman Barker. Barks, sorry. And uh, you, you've probably heard of Rumi before. And if you don't remember his name, um, you probably, you remember him from like meme form on Facebook. Like you'll have like a, like a quote from a poem and it, it invariably it's by Rumi. Um, and I, I, these are some of my favorite, uh, some of my favorite poems, but I've never, read all of them in one place. So that's what this is about. And again, like this one, like, I mean, they're, they're poems, right? I mean, like they're not, I mean, they're not super long. Um, so I feel like I can get through this pretty quickly. So like a book like uh, the Frederick Douglass biography, it's like 400 pages, 500 pages, you know, it's a little bit heavier. Um, but this reading, you know, this, this month of, of reading in February, it's not insurmountable. So I can do it. Um, and this, this isn't, isn't even actually counting the, uh, eBooks that I'm going to be reading as well. So like I always have, a, I get eBooks and physical books on the go at one time, uh, because like, I'm not always carrying a physical book around with me. Sometimes I'm like waiting in line somewhere or sitting in my car waiting for someone while I'm picking them up or, or what have you. And you know, if I don't have a book around, I always have my phone so I can, I have books that I can read just a little random reading tip in the middle here. Um, next book, and we're almost we're almost done here. It's a study of Gurdjieff's teaching, and again, I know I know next to nothing about Gurdjieff. Um, really, not even enough to, to to speak coherently about like on what the the book is about, other than it's about essential questions. Um, I know that Colin Wilson references him quite a bit in his in his Outsider Cycle uh, as not not a, 
Gurdjieff wouldn't call himself an existentialist, but he's concerned with some of the same ultimate questions and the, the intensity, the lived intensity of one's life. So a study of Gurdjieff's teachings. Um, let's see. Oh, I've got more here than I, than I thought. See, these are all, these are all little books that I can get to pretty easily, um, but that are still worth reading. Uh, so one, another Shakespeare play, I got uh, Julius Caesar, and uh, I won't rehash the entire plot of uh, Julius Caesar, uh, but one story about him, uh, actually two stories about Julius Caesar. Uh, one, he, he once stopped an entire revolution by saying one word, <laughs> and it was like a military, re military revolution. Um, started by his soldiers that were revolting against his rule. And uh, he, he got up in front of them and he said one word, he said, citizens. And by that it was implied that, well, if you don't want to be soldiers, you can be citizens. <laughs> and they basically said, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll be good. <laughs> and an another time, uh, Julius Caesar was kidnapped by uh, pirates in the Mediterranean, back when people were still kidnapped by pirates. <laughs> and uh, they set a ransom for his release. I, I don't know if he was um, emperor yet or not. I think this was before, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but anyway, so they set this ransom, and uh, Julius Caesar was like, that ransom isn't even close to enough. You have no idea who I am. That ransom has to be way higher. <laughs> and and then they set the ransom even higher. Rome paid it, they, they got Julius Caesar back, and then Julius Caesar uh, got in his ships with a bunch of people, they found the pirates and fucking slaughtered them all. Uh, so, Julius Caesar, uh, Shakespeare. Um, next one is one, I forgot to take the, the price tag off, the, or the price sticker off the book, but, <laughs> but it is uh, Candide by Voltaire. And it, again, this is very, 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 very short. So. I can read this in like a couple hours. Um, and I started to already, I started this book years ago and for whatever reason I didn't finish it, um, which is strange because I mean, it's, well, anyway, so I'm gonna finish it. Um, it's basically him ridiculing uh, Leibniz's idea that this is the best of all possible worlds. And there's so much like violence and rape and destruction in one little tiny book. It's uh, it, it's almost comical. And like, that's the idea. Like, it, like this is the best of all possible worlds where like, where this stuff is allowed to happen. Like, how could that be? And it's sort of a, a satirical examination of that. Um, all right, so moving right along, last three books. And the last one being one of the mystery books I alluded to earlier. Um, so we got The Clouds by Aristophanes. It's an ancient Greek uh, play. I believe it's a comedy. Um, anyway, it, it's one in which he uh, he makes fun of Socrates. So Aristophanes and Socrates didn't really see eye to eye, as it were. And uh, so I believe this is the play where he makes fun of him and sort of ridicules Socrates' whole deal. Um, but I'm looking forward to, to reading it because I don't know much about it other than it's, it's Aristophanes. And second to last, we got Faust by Goethe. Um, I read an excellent biography of Johann von Goethe uh, last year by Rudiger Safransky. And that same guy, he's got a biography of uh, Friedrich Nietzsche as well that I, I want to read. A bunch of stuff like that. Uh, so I'm going to finally read Faust. Uh, it's basically about a, a bet between a demon and God. Um, the demon uh, Mephistopheles basically bets God that he can lure God's favorite human away from righteous pursuits. So that is Faust. And uh, we'll see how that works out for everyone. I know in um, in my upcoming book, I've got a, um, a character named Mephistopheles, uh, or Meph for short, and it's based on, on this book. Uh, but right now, I'm sort of reading it for research, if you will, so I can sort of inform that character a little bit more. And as well, it's like a, it's a classic. I mean, it's, it's probably the most popular German play. I think it is the most popular German play of all time, and I haven't read it, so it's time to change that. And then the last book um, that I will be reading in February, uh, physical books, not counting ebooks, is um, like I said in the in the intro. It's uh, it's from one of the most famous uh, writers still writing today, uh, by the name of Ryan Holiday. It's his latest book called Lives of the Stoics. Um, so Stoic philosophy. You got Zeno, Marcus Aurelius, Seneca. Um, it's basically about how to to differentiate between what's in your control versus what's not in your control and uh, how to not be affected by the stuff that's not under your control and things like that. Just living a, a good, um, a 
yeah, a good life, essentially. Um, so this is, if when I, when I finish reading this, it means I will have read every single book that Ryan Holiday has ever written. And I'm looking forward to it, even though I'm sort of, I'm not like bored with stoicism, but you know, you've, you've probably heard of it before because it's just sort of being hammered over everyone's heads repeatedly and has been over the last like five, 10 years. So it's like everywhere you look, or I mean, at least everywhere I look, it's like stoicism this, stoicism that. It's like everywhere. Um, so this, I mean, I'm gonna read it because I'm a fan of him. And, and I'm, I'm definitely interested in the subject matter. Like Marcus Aurelius, um, his book called Meditations absolutely changed my life. It's definitely a before and after uh, book in my life where I, I see what I was like before and I don't want to go back there. And I see what I'm like now after reading it and I'm just thankful for having read it. So, so this one is gonna be interesting, but I think I'm gonna take a break from stoicism after I read this one. Um, but that being said, that brings us to uh, the end of the, um, of the 17 books. Um, so that's what I'm going to read in February. And I promised you in the beginning that I was going to tell you how you can win a free book uh, paid for by me. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to be running a, a YouTube contest in February. So by the end of February, I'm going to let people know who won. And I'm going to basically give away a book of the winner's choice. So I think I'm going to keep it under $25. I might just send the winner a $25 Amazon gift card. Uh, but all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, comment below tagging two friends, and sign up to my email list, which is where you'll get notified about who won. Uh, I'd also appreciate it. I mean, if you enjoyed the video, like the video because it helps with uh, the YouTube engagement uh, metrics. So if enough people like the video, it gets seen by more people. So if you think this video should be seen by more people, press the like button. Um, so yeah, that that's pretty much it. Just uh, to enter, just subscribe to the channel, tag two friends in the comments, and then sign up to the email list. And once you're signed up, you'll get you know book recommendations, bunch of free stuff uh, from me as well. Um, and you'll 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 know you'll find out if you have won the free book. Um, so I'll, I'll end it there. Um, that's longer video than than I normally like to do. Uh, but I hope one, at least one of these books uh, fired your uh, your curiosity and your interest and you decide to pick up one of them uh, because I think these are some, some pretty spectacular books. I can't wait to read them. So until next time, cheers. I don't waste time, no, I make time. All these people want to hate fine. I'm going to make mine. While you sit in there complaining, I'll be training. While you sit in there just waiting, I'm creating. Yeah. 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 Sometimes I think that I'm unstoppable.